Okay, welcome to the Sunday shop update. I'm going to show you today how I milled and machined these braces for oak frame building. Um, there's a framer putting the building up, but they couldn't do the machining. It's pretty heavy work, so 80 mil oak. Uh, take you through how I did it. I used my sliding panel saw for the tongues and obviously band saw for the cut. And I'll just show you that. There's 14 of these, so a bit of an epic repeating session, but pretty pleased with how they come out. So some of you have seen this before if you watch my channel, some of you haven't. So I thought I'd just show you it. This is an adjustable groove cutter from Felder. Um, and I've actually had it adapted at a machinist. So I've had it rebated here. And a bigger rebate on the back to allow it to fit perfectly on my spindle. And I've also had the Felder holes are much closer. I've had it elongated by an engineering firm. And you can use these inserts to make it up to about 20 mil. So it gives you, uh, oh, it says on here, 12 to 20 mil of rebate on a 30 mil shaft. So adjustable, we've cut in really quick, very safe, uh, very easy to use. And that's what I decided to use to nibble away at the um, oak braces. And then the blades I use are these Trend Industrial. Um, this is a ripping blade and it is a 350 and 16 tooth, so quite an aggressive blade. So, I've got this lot in to make a load of braces, square shoulder braces. This is the template from the framer. And they just want the tenons cut in and the shape for the braces. Quite a traditional thing in this area, English oak. of these to do in total. There's enough wood for 16 just in case. So what we've got here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, this is 14. This is the last one. Probably overweight. Let's see if I can move it.
pretty nasty the green oak so don't have a framing shot I don't really want that sticky stuff all over the place really horrible this metal stuff from Felder is really good let that soak in after the uh, oven cleaner cuts into your surface and then once that's at a time to settle in I'll come back stick that on there to remind me stick some of that on and be done So we're removing a lot of material and this was polished as you saw earlier. Now I'm doing a tenons, look at it. Looks like a completely rusty thing. It's gonna have to have a serious clean down. Um, really working with green oak and kiln dried and stuff. You shouldn't really mix the machines, but because um, the clear up here, as you can see, it's everywhere. It's gonna be pretty epic. So I do the awkward side first of the shoulder and then when I flip it, I can get my head right over from the back and see the other side of the shoulder. But they're all done now, one side, and now I've just got to start again and just repeat that. Spare. Now back to the clear up. That's looking pretty grim. So I'm afraid my camera wasn't rolling when I cleaned this. I'll show you a bit of cleaning on the blade. That'll give you an idea of what this looked like. So 
So when it comes to cleaning the cast iron beds after a job like that, which is pretty horrendous, what I use is um, a spray oven cleaner, and I've got a video on that cleaning blades. As you just saw, it really eats it back. And as soon as I've used a heavy spray oven cleaner on something like this, I'll go in with this metal uh, glands or whatever they call it, which is, that's, well, that's a Felder one, that's the only one I know, lasts for ages. I'll leave that overnight. It's a really good rust preventing oil. I'll then clean that off and I'll probably, in this case, because it was a hardcore clean, um, I'll use this wax paste. I can't remember where I bought this. I'll try and find it, but it's probably on eBay or something like this. Um, and again, I'll leave that for a little while and then give that, no silicon, give that a clean. And then to get all of that off, I'll just buff it with a little pad. And it's so, it's hard to see, but it's absolutely like brand new now. And then once it's done and everything's finished, I'll use this, the Super Glide, which is absolutely phenomenal. I'm sure you've all heard of this. If you haven't, you need it. It's brilliant on planar thicknesses, but um, it's really good on these tops. I mean, once you've got a really good running top uh, on your saw, everything is so much easier. I use it on the band saw, I use it on everything that's cast iron, especially on the planar thicknesser. So obviously it's really important that you keep your cast iron beds clean. If they're not clean and they're rusty, it just makes everything really hard to get it accurate. So I spent about an hour at the end of this job just cleaning this saw, really, really getting that crap off from the, the green oak. Um, anyway, that's it for this week's Sunday Shop update. Thanks so much for watching. There'll be more on my Patreon channel, a bit more in-depth stuff coming over the next few months. So thanks so much to you guys as well. Thanks to all your support. I'll see you on the next one.